Welcome to Programming with KBS Part 2. My name is Antonio Lain, I'm the founder of KBS Labs. In Part 1, we cover the component model, the cloud assistant that is our core abstraction, and then we made this cloud assistant autonomous and show you how to interact with it using the client library. Two themes for today. First, how to add collaborative multi-tenancy to your app using the trusted bus and then two communication abstractions built on top of that bus, share map and publish subscribe. And then the second part of this talk is all about why the framework is three-way isomorphic and how to integrate devices using KBS Lite. Multi-tenancy is not that interesting. Isolate your clients, provide a fair distribution of resources between them, and you are done. But when you add the word collaborative, everything changes. Bootstrap trust between strangers, help them to interact. The success or failure of many, many apps depends on getting this right. How do you bootstrap trust? With repeatability and control. With repeatability, you can link many interactions over time to build reputations. With control, every single interaction is safe and that encourages new interactions. Both repeatability and control are implemented in KBS using the trusted bus. How do we help interaction? In KBS, we build high-level communication primitives on top of that bus. For example, a share map to help you distribute data in a very cost-effective manner. Or a traditional public subscribe abstraction. And of course, we also need to provide the core properties of multi-tenancy. What is the trusted bus? The trusted bus mediates interactions between cloud assistants within one app and ensures some access control policy is always enforced. So for example, if we have a cloud assistant foo-ca1 that wants to interact with another cloud assistant, it will inject a request into that bus and the bus will always guarantee that this request is properly authenticated. When the request arrives to its destination, before invoking any methods on the cloud assistant, we will perform an access control check based on whatever policy you have defined. How do we implement authentication in the bus? The first thing to think about is that the implementation of authentication in the client library that we describe in part one is unfortunately not good enough for this. We need something much lighter, something that doesn't require tokens or any other crypto. Our general strategy is to ensure that every single endpoint that can inject requests into the bus is a trusted endpoint. And it will always add the true identity of the requester to every single request. Of course, once a request has been injected into the bus, we have to make sure that nobody can tamper with it. How do we actually implement these two things in KBS? The first thing we do is we wrap every single plugin that interacts with a trusted bus with a secure proxy. And these security proxies are the ones that are going to do all the heavy lifting of authentication and not your code. The second thing we do is we define a Kubernetes network policy so that all the Node.js processes that are running your app, they live in the same network bubble, completely isolated from other apps. 
and that guarantees that we all the endpoints are going to be trusted. What about authorization? Before calling a, a method of a, of a cloud assistant, we always perform an access control check. And that check is based on who is calling, what method are we trying to invoke, and what is the policy associated with the target CA. We also provide another complementary mechanism for authorization. So whenever the method is executing, we can always query the system and ask, who is calling me? And based on the reply, change our behavior. And of course, for consistency, we want to make sure that regardless of what is the mechanism to propagate this request, whether it's the client library or the trusted bus, we're always going to enforce the same policy. What is the default policy in KVJS? The default policy is trust no one. So that means there is no interactions allowed across the trusted bus. The only interactions allowed are by the owner using the client library. So if you see that nothing seems to work in your app, the first thing to check is to make sure that the security policy is right. Luckily, it's very simple to describe policy in KVJS. If you remember from part one, every single resource, for example, a cloud assistant, is named within the local namespace of the owner. So for example, a cloud assistant called Antonio-CA1 will be named CA1 in the local namespace of Antonio. And that makes it extremely simple to describe and enforce policies based on ownership. So for example, if we say uh, Antonio, we are referring to every single cloud assistant that is owned by Antonio. In other cases, we want to make generic policies, and we can do that by using security.self. When we say security.self, every single CA that has the same owner, they all can have certain privileges. So for example, in this code, every cloud assistant that has the same owner could call get counter on each other. And then we can just simply use the network plugin to add a rule. We can also define rules that apply for to multiple methods by just simply having an array with all these methods. Or we could also create policies that apply to any method by just setting it to null. In some cases, we want to describe more complex policies, and we can do that with aggregate rules. So for example, we could have a dynamic policy defined by a group. And in KVJS, we will implement these groups using a share map that we will describe in a moment. Share maps are very powerful because it's very easy to replicate them across the whole system. And this allows us to have a consistent policy for many CAs that could be owned by the same or different owners. We can also create links between these share maps. And what this allows us to do is to ensure that the maintenance of group membership can be delegated to a team. 
there's much more to learn about Kavye security. Most of the things that I have been describing were inspired by distributed authorization frameworks, like for example, SADSI. In particular, we use the notion of, in SADSI of linking local namespaces to implement delegation. Please have a look at the documentation. Let's talk about share maps. It's hard to efficiently share data across many CAs, particularly if you want predictable low latency for the accesses. In a pure actor model, you will have to replicate that, that data in private state in many CAs and then keep that data updated by processing requests. This is very expensive, both in terms of memory and also CPU overhead. A better approach would be to use a distributed data structure. These data structures could use shared memory in the process for replicating that data. And they could also enable silent updates updates that do not require processing a request per CA. The challenge is how to integrate cloud assistance and distributed data structures. On one hand, we would like to ensure that the, the data in the distributed data structure is always visible as private CA state. But at the same time, we don't want to break the actor model. We want to respect request serialization. We don't want to introduce all the gremlins associated with shared memory programming, like races, deadlocks, or these terrible failure modes. Ideally, what you would like to have is an automated way in which you could replace every single call to this distributed data structure by extra requests in a pure actor model. And if you do so, you will end up with two systems that are observationally equivalent. What that means is that an external observer that ignores performance and the consumption of resources couldn't tell the difference between both systems. The SER map is our first distributed data structure that has all these nice properties that I just described. It is a single writer, multiple reader data structure where the single writer is the owner CA and the readers are CAs that see this data structure as internal read-only state. The owner CA also gives the name to the share map. So for example, a CA called Antonio-CA1 could have a map that is named Antonio-CA1 map1. Share maps have a standard get and set interface where keys are always strings. And they could be replicated in thousands of processes across many servers. The key to that scalability is that you only need one update per process, not per CA. And a process could have thousands of, of cloud assistants. We also internally use multiversioning with a structural reuse to minimize the overhead in memory. And these share maps can be replicated in the cloud, in the browser, and also across your IoT devices. Let me give you an example of how to use a share map. We define two functions. One is isAdmin that identifies the cloud assistant for a particular owner that has the role admin. And the other function is primary map that gives you the name of the map associated with that cloud assistant. The admin 
Cloud Assistant is going to create a writable map and give you some initial value. And then using the pulse method, every so often it will just simply keep incrementing that count. Everybody else will create a read-only map and then provide a get count method that will allow anybody to obtain the count value by reading into the replicas. How do we respect serialization with shared maps? Let me show you an example. Here we call on a replica twice the get count operation. But between these two operations, we have a, an asynchronous operation that takes a second. But regardless of changes to the primary, we guarantee that these two values are always going to be the same because they happen in the same request. Now, if another cloud assistant that shares the process with this cloud assistant calls get count, it might be the case that even though it could happen between these two calls, it may see a different value, a newer one. And the reason is because we never actually delay cloud assistance from seeing newly available information that is local to the process. Of course, that requires to have multiple versions of the data structure in the process. But as I said just a moment ago, we do that very efficiently using a structural reuse. What about consistency? As we described in part one, we always externalize changes with transactional plugins. And these plugins gives you atomic updates and they also give you external consistency. What that means is that whenever we externalize the state, we have a checkpoint in Redis that is backing up those changes. So that if there is a failure, we can always return to a state that is consistent with whatever the rest of the world thing our state should be. So for example, in this case, we set the value count to some value, and then we set count two to the same value plus one. But after an asynchronous function that potentially takes quite a while, The, the plugins guarantee that all the replicas are always going to see count two being one plus the value of count. And also, if we send a notification with the new values of the counts, we also guarantee that whoever sees that notification is always going to find that the cloud assistant has a consistent state with a not notification because the cloud assistant has already done a checkpoint with these new values. What about replicas? We don't have distributed transactions in our system and the guarantees that we provide are monotonic read consistency. So what that means is that you will never see a previous value that you have already seen. And also the replicas will eventually catch up with the primaries. Another important property of shared maps is that they can contain serialized methods. 
and that makes them a custom replicated object. Of course, using eval opens the kind of worms. So we are very careful that we never internally call eval until you call the function apply method. And also these methods are authenticated because the name of the owner is always part of the name of the map and only the owner can modify that map. Also, with transactional plugins, we guarantee that changes to both data and code are atomic. And this opens up many different uses of this data structure. So for example, we could add getters and setters to a share map and with them we can hide the schema changes in the structure of the data in the map. By doing so, the clients of that map will never ever have to worry again about data versioning. The other thing that we can do is to dynamically update code everywhere. For example, in all sorts of devices. And do that in a safe manner because serialization guarantees that changes to the code will only happen between requests. Now, let's talk about publish subscribe. We provide a traditional publish subscribe mechanism with two kinds of topics, private topics that work a little bit like a blog in which anybody can subscribe but only one CA can publish to that topic. And that CA gives also the name to the topic. For example, a CA called Antonio-CA1 could have a topic called Antonio-CA1 My News. We also support a different kind of topics that we call forums. They are always prefixed by forum hyphen and anybody can publish to them or subscribe. But if you want to filter from whom you are receiving messages, you can always use the trusted policy, trusted bus, bus policy to, to filter. Let me give you an example of how to use publish subscribe. The function is admin is, is similar as in the previous case, but now we have a main channel and main channel will give you the topic associated with the admin CA. Everybody can subscribe to that channel by defining a handle function. And that handle function has three arguments, the topic, so that we can multiplex several topics with the same function, with the same method, the message that it receives, and also the name of the publisher. In order to receive messages that have been published, you also have to configure the security to allow the trusted bus to accept these messages. And then in this case, the admin CA will just continuously publish new values of count, as we show here. In practice, share map and publish subscribe are many, in many cases used together because they are very complementary. Share maps provides you a a very cost-effective mechanism to silently update data and code across many different cloud assistants. And Publish Subscribe allows you with a single publish to trigger an action on many, many CAs. But Publish tends to be a best for our approach and for example, by using a share map, you can actually confirm that you have received important 
messages. Or in other cases, you want to update the system and then create external actions with a publish. One big advantage of our system is that by using transactional plugins, these plugins, as we described in part one, they combine nicely using a two-phase commit protocol. And that makes much easier to use share map and publish subscribe together. We are all familiar with two-way isomorphic frameworks like React that allow you to render pages either in the client or in the cloud using server-side rendering. With KVJS and autonomous cloud assistance, we can also implement server-side rendering in a proactive manner. So instead of waiting for a request to arrive, whenever there is a significant change in the state of the cloud assistant, the cloud assistant could render that page and push it to an external cache that hopefully is closer to where the client lives. You can read more about proactive service are rendering in the, in the documentation, but today we are going to focus on why KVJS is a three-way isomorphic framework. A typical KVJS application has three programs. One that runs in the cloud, the other one that runs in the browser, and the third one that runs in the device. When we talk about device, we don't typically mean the actual IoT device. We don't want to modify the low-level firmware of these devices. Instead, what we do is to write breaching code that might run in your laptop or it might run in a Raspberry Pi. And this code will interact with the actual IoT device over Bluetooth or other simple protocol over a serial link. Breaching code lives in KVJS in a platform that we call KVJS Lite that we will describe in a moment. In KVJS, you write these three programs in JavaScript and you treat them as a single unit. With emulation, you can actually run and debug them in your laptop. And when you're ready, you can create a single container and just push it to the cloud. But with a three-way isomorphic framework, you can do much more than that. You can take the breaching code and also run it in the browser. By using tools like Browserify, you can replace every single low-level low Bluetooth API call by web Bluetooth API calls. And what is the advantage of doing that? That you no longer need to carry your laptop or a Raspberry Pi around. The only thing that you need to make any device Bluetooth device around you accessible from the cloud is your phone. And not on with Android that supports with Chrome Web Bluetooth APIs, you don't even need a native app installed in your phone. But you can do more things. You can take the reaching code and now run it in the cloud. Obviously, you are not going to be able to interact with local Bluetooth devices, but you will be able to, for example, make it simpler to impersonate the device when the device is offline or create rich user interfaces dynamically by introspecting the code 
or scale load testing by simulating thousands of devices in the cloud. Kavye Slide is where your breaching code lives. Kavye Slide is a simplified version of Kavye Yes. You can only have one CA Lite instance per platform, and the long term state of that instance is kept in the cloud using a dedicated companion CA. There's no checkpointing, many plugins are not transactional. And also, we have a much simpler way of configuring the system. Many of the core methods have been renamed. To make it clear that it's not a full CA, but also to pay homage to Arduino. There are also many similarities. We use the same component model. We use a queue to serialize methods. We roll back steady changes on error, and we use plugins, share maps, and so on and so forth. Let me show you an example of a CA light. We define two methods, setup and loop, and setup is going to be executed every time that the device restarts. Loop, on the other hand, is very similar to pulls it will be executed periodically. A CA light interacts with its companion CA using two share maps, to cloud and from cloud. From cloud is written by its companion CA and read by the CA light. To cloud is written by the CA light, but there is read by both. Why by both? Because we are also use it to store the long-term state of the CA light. So for example, in setup, we will be reading the, the count that was stored the last time that the device was active. We also use from cloud to change the configuration of the device. So here, for example, we will simply change the, the, the log message that we create. Let me show you what the compa companion CA looks like. On the right, we have exactly the same code as before. I just leave it here for reference. The companion CA is a standard CA and it defines two external methods, set message and get count. Set message is used to change the configuration of the device by just simply modifying the from cloud share map. Get count, on the other hand, is used to read sensor data from the device that in this case is just only count and it has been written in the two cloud share map. There are several ways for a companion CA to trigger actions on devices, but my favorite one is to use time bundles. With time bundles, you can very accurately coordinate actions on many devices across the world. And the key to scale is to trigger actions not when they arrive to the device, but when the actions are due, based on UTC time. So if you give me a couple of seconds, so I can propagate and cache these bundles on the devices, I could have well over 100,000 devices anywhere in the world, and most of them will synchronize their actions within 100 milliseconds of each other. Part of the secret for this accuracy is that the client library synchronizes clocks of devices with the cloud. But the keyword is most. 
CAPJS should not be used for safety critical applications like driving a car. In fact, you could argue that Node.js with garbage collection that relies on a collector that does not provide hard real-time guarantees is probably not a suitable platform for this kind of apps. But in any case, we are trying to provide a system that is predictable and well behaved. And we do that by giving clean execution semantics to the bundles. In KVJS, only commands from one bundle are executed at any time. So for example, when B2 starts executing, the last command of B1 will get ignored. And the same will happen when B3 starts executing. The last command of B2 will get ignored. If we assume there's no more bundles after B3, all the commands of B3 will get executed. So why is that useful? Because we could add a last command to each bundle that takes a recovery action. And if there is a network partitioning and the, last, and the next bundle never arrives, that last command will actually take over and always leave the device in a safe state. And on the other hand, if there is no network partition, the recovery action will get ignored and it will just continue processing a new bundle. What do we do with late bundles? The device will ignore it, but the companion CA will receive an error. Based on that error, it could decide to take a high level recovery action. In some cases, we want to ensure that an action will be executed right away. And we do that with the constants now and now safe. It is recommended to use now safe because co commands expire and you don't have the problem of a lingering command that two weeks later will surprise you when you turn on one of the devices. How do we create bundles using a companion CA? We use the same trick that we described in part one for sessions. We introspect the code and then for every single external method, we create dynamically a method in the bundle. So for example, here we assume that down, up and recover are already present in IoT methods.js. The first argument to these methods is always the relative timing with respect to the previous command in milliseconds. And the second argument will be an array with the arguments for the method. After creating the bundle, we call send bundle to freeze it, and that fixes the starting time of the bundle. We can also customize the margin of time that we assume is going to take to propagate and execute the bundle. And in order to minimize that margin, typically we also send a notification to the device so that the WebSocket will wake up the device and it will start acting right away. Bundles are typically created in a pulse method so that we can create a stream of bundles and pipeline them in the device to ensure smooth movement. There's much more to learn about KVJS Lite. You can create cron tasks that periodically will invoke certain commands. You can also have hooks in your companion CA that gets called every time the device connects or every time the device syncs state. 
you can customize error handling. You can call companion CA methods using the client library. And you can use many of our plugins for Bluetooth or also for GPIO pins. Let me summarize what we have seen today. We first started describing how to make your application take advantage of collaborative multi-tenancy. And in that context, we look at the trusted bus that mediates interactions between your cloud assistants and provides authentication and authorization for every request. Then we look at share map, a distributed data structure that helps you to replicate data very efficiently across all your cloud assistants. We look at how nicely it integrates with cloud assistants, respecting serialization and external consistency. And then we also look at how to add serialized methods to the share map in order to make a share map a distributed, replicated, custom object. Then we look at publish subscribe and the different topics that we support with our current implementation. And also discuss how publish subscribe integrates with share maps. In the second part of this talk, we look at three-way isomorphic frameworks like CAF.js and we describe CAF.js Lite, the platform that you use to run device breaching code. Within CAF.js Lite, we describe companion CAs and also how companion CAs can use time bundles to interact with devices. There's much more information in the website and examples and applications in GitHub. And there is also the KVS Cloud, where you can run in a very simple manner your cloud assistance. You don't need a credit card to sign up, and we will give you a few units to get started. We would love to hear from you, either through Twitter or, or email. Thanks for listening.